Hello Dynamic students, this is Dr. Dan Baker with a lecture today talking about fixed axis rotation and specifically relating the angular position theta, the angular velocity omega, and the angular acceleration alpha. Now just a quick review of these three terms. If we take a look at, uh, so here is a rigid body. Let's say our fixed axis point here is in the lower corner. If I additionally put a line on this body, okay, so this is kind of a trick in thinking about like how we think about, it, especially that, that angle theta. So we could reference that angle theta, say to a vertical reference point, and I could say, hey, here at the initial position, there is an angle theta to that reference line, right? So this is just a reference line. And so if we rotate this rigid body, I'll draw this um, second rotation body in gray, trying to keep the same general dimensions. So looking something like that, and then this would have the same reference line going to the far corner that we could also find. So if this was theta one, we could draw that this angle down to here would be theta two. And so technically the angular displacement of any line on a body, as long as that line goes to the fixed axis point, is gonna have the same overall change in theta. So the same delta theta. And so uh, obviously if it rotated down in this direction, we could also add to the system here that we have an omega. And additionally, we could have an angular acceleration alpha. Okay, so omega is the time rate of change of theta. Let me go ahead and review those terms here real quick. So we can say that um, omega is d theta dt, and also alpha is equal to d omega dt. So the time rate of change of the angular position is the angular velocity, and the time rate of change of the angular velocity is the angular acceleration. Okay, so these equations should look pretty familiar to you as they're generally the same equations as we related linear position, linear velocity, and linear acceleration. So in linear motion, we ended up relating our position to our velocity to our tangential acceleration. And in angular, we're going to relate our theta to our omega to our alpha. Now, if you're looking for equations relating across these terms, say your v to your omega and a sub t to your alpha, that's gonna be a separate set of equations, okay? Um, but this particular set of equations essentially just sticks within all angular terms um, we can relate across them. And so I won't go through the full derivations here in this video, um, but we'll go through generally most of them. So, uh, and they actually started right up here. So if this is our omega, we can also write this as theta dot, right? The time rate of change. Keeping in mind that this dot in all my derivations is gonna be the time rate of change of that variable, not a position rate of change. And then additionally, I can write this one here as um, theta double dot is often the most common one. Now I'll try to use in most of my derivations here, um, the omega and the alpha versus theta dot and theta double dot, but I just wanted to point those out. Now there is additionally another equation which we also used in a linear sense, and that is relating the position, velocity, and acceleration without respect to time. Okay, so if we do this without respect to time, then we end up with an equation that says, um, alpha d theta is equal to omega d omega. Now, if you're wondering where this came from, let me just go ahead and derive this here quickly. So looking here at this equation, um, alpha is equal to d omega dt. And if we multiply the top and bottom of that equation, by a d theta divided by d theta, I think that you'll see here that we end up with this d theta dt. We know d theta dt is equal to omega. So then we end up with alpha is equal to d omega d theta. Sorry, I'm off the bottom of the screen. Let me scroll up. d omega d theta times omega. Okay, and all I need to do to get an alpha d theta form is multiply the d theta over onto the left-hand side. Okay, so that's just a little review of where that equation came from. So coming back up top here, we have our third equation, alpha d omega equals omega d omega. 
And so if we take integrals of these equations, I think you'll remember that uh, we can end up with a constant acceleration form. Okay, so if we end up with a constant acceleration sub c, then uh, essentially, like I said, by starting with this equation here and working through our time derivatives, we can end up with the equation that theta minus theta naught, the initial value of theta, is equal to omega naught times t plus one half of our alpha constant times t squared. Okay, and you'll you'll probably remember that there's an equation that looks almost exactly like this for our linear terms, right? S minus S naught is equal to V naught times T plus one half constant linear acceleration times T squared. And so once again here, um, looking at our next equation that we can pull out of this, omega minus omega naught is equal to alpha sub C times T. And then our third equation, uh, which essentially derived from this bottom one here is our omega uh, squared minus omega naught squared. Now you can either put the one half on this side or you can bring it over on the other side as a two times our alpha sub c times the change, our theta minus theta naught. Okay, so once again, you can go back to your linear notes from um, particle motion back in, you know, particle kinetics, and you'd see that you have these parallel equations for linear terms. Now we have them for all of our angular terms. So I just wanted to share those with you. Hope that was valuable, and have an awesome day.